Well, hello friends, it's Amy Ferlici at the Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio, and today I have a beautiful holiday card to show you. I am calling this the Flippy Fun Fold card, and you're gonna see why, because it starts out as kind of this tall version of a card, and then you flip it open, and it's like a wide, kind of long version of the card. Um, I have to tell you that my downline, Sharon, brought this card to um, our meeting last month, our Inspired Stampers group meeting. It was a creative challenge that we had issued to make cards with fun folds. And then this was the fun fold that she made on her card and we all absolutely fell in love with it. She actually made, I think it was really a different card, but then she made this one because we just participated in uh, Rhonda Wade's creative convention. A couple of my Inkspired stampers went down to the convention and we were actually given this wrapped in plaid suite of products to use for a display that we created. So we used everything from the wrapped in plaid suite, like the perfectly plaid stamp set, and then the coordinating that pine tree punch. We used a bunch of the wrapped in plaid designer series paper, and then some of that gold and uh, shaded spruce uh, ribbon. Plus we use the fun little jingle bells and the mini pizza boxes. So our display was beautiful. I have to say the ladies in my Inkspired Stampers group did an amazing job uh, coming up with some really beautiful projects. And you can see obviously Stampin' Up! has done the same thing. Beautiful projects here as well. I'm going to flip just so you can see because this is the designer series paper. So many beautiful plaids. I love all of these plaids. And then there's kind of a closer up view of the perfectly plaid stamp set. So anyway, Sharon came up with this card. She actually found a video on YouTube by a gal named Clo. She's a beautiful demonstrator from Australia. So Clo, she spells her name C-H-L-O, and she's at Clo's Craft Closet on YouTube. So we can't take credit. I think she said she saw this uh, you know, made somewhere else, so it's kind of a down-the-line type of thing, but we just love this card. I demonstrated it, too, at the Creative Convention, and I told the gals there um, when we were kind of talking about our display table. I said, I'm going to uh, show you how to make this card, try to, and then I'm going to go home and make a YouTube video. So that's where we are at now. We're going to make a YouTube video to show you exactly how to make this fun, beautiful holiday card. And if you can see, it's a great sentiment here. It says, may this special season be wrapped in love and joy, and then the fun sentiment on the inside hoping that your busy year comes together in Christmas cheer with those fun little um, pine cones in the corner there too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to give you measurements and just try to kind of tell you step by step how I put this together. And now let's see, I had two pieces of cherry cobbler cardstock. Where did the other one go? Oh no, that's why I don't need cherry cobbler. <laughs> I was thinking, oh no, I didn't do it right. But I actually changed it up a little bit because you need a number of pieces of this designer series paper and I didn't have this exact paper any longer. So I decided I'm gonna use, so we're gonna kind of do things a little bit opposite, but you'll get the idea. This is gonna be for our card base. So instead of cherry cobbler cardstock, we're gonna use some shaded spruce cardstock. So you start with, this is two pieces of shaded spruce cardstock and I'm gonna tell you, they measure four inches by 10 and a quarter inches, okay? So step number one, you grab whatever scoring tool you have, and I have this oldie but goodie here. We are gonna score, and I'm using this one rather than my scoring plate because we have to do some things on a diagonal and I couldn't quite figure out how to do those on a diagonal. So uh, bear with me here. We are going to line our cardstock up at five and a half inches. So that's step one. Along that 10 and a quarter inch, we're gonna score each of our pieces at five and a half inches, okay? So we're gonna do that. Step one, right there, okay? Next, we on, actually, so if you can see, and I even brought, I'll show you guys, my little, I, I used this for my demonstration because it was a little bit easier to see. This is just kind of ugly copy paper at this point. It's all rumpled up. But if you can see where I scored it at five and a half inches, I'm calling this side a small rectangle and this side a large rectangle. What we wanna do, if you can see my little tick mark there, we're gonna put our cardstock in at, let me show you, maybe it'll actually be easier. So on the small rectangle, the little rectangle, you put your cardstock in and you line it up at four inches and then you score it. No, actually don't score it, you make a little tick mark. We're not gonna score it because we don't want to straight. So I'm gonna, with my pen, I'm just gonna make a little tick mark up. So 
Again, line it up at four inches, find where the scoring tool is gonna go down, and then just make a little tick mark. Then what you need to do, if you can see, so from that tick mark, we're gonna score from that tick mark down to that corner. So this is why I didn't use my scoring plate because I wasn't sure that I would be able to get it in at an angle like this. So can you guys all see, you get the idea. That's my little tick mark at four inches and I've got my corner and then you just score that right there. And then this piece is just gonna fold down and shoo, I did it right. The idea is that this is gonna fold flush right there for us and then we can also fold that in okay so that's one half now we're going to do the other half same exact way we're going to find our small rectangle not our large rectangle we're going to line it up at four inches we are going to oops i just undid that we're going to make our little tick mark with a pen or pencil whatever you want then we're going to flip it kind of on an angle we're going to find our tick mark and our point at the corner and we're going to score again Okay, same thing then. We're gonna fold in along that score mark and I did it again correctly, yay! <laughs> and then fold this in. Now this becomes our card base. If you can see, do you see how that? So these, we're gonna put a bunch of adhesive all over the back of that. I would actually probably recommend using tear and tape. I forgot to bring that. Um, I'm still cheating and using my fast fuse because I still have some of that left. So that's what I, <laughs> I shouldn't even share that anymore, right? Um, but maybe someday Stampin' Up! will come out with fast fuse again. But we're gonna, so let's go ahead, let's put our adhesive on. We're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna scoot that over just a little bit so that we can put our card base together, okay? I'm gonna run adhesive all over this thing, right? tape runner is being kind of funny. Okay, so we're gonna put that one there. So I'm just gonna line that right up along my score mark. Press down, that's gonna be good. Okay, so we're just gonna press really firmly. Okay, so that's the basic idea, right? We're gonna start with a tall card, it looks like. I think this might be opposite, isn't that funny? I might have flipped it inside rather, but that'll be okay. Or is that gonna drive me crazy? It might drive me crazy, so we're gonna flip these the other way. Okay, here we go. And it works just the same now, because <laughs> that might put me over the edge if my flip, my flaps were backwards. So there we go. Now we've got this one, and that's all you have to do, right? If you put it on the wrong way, you just flip it over, okay? So I want this kind of triangle corner to be up in that top left, and then this one to be in the bottom right side, okay? So when I open it, it goes like that, right? Okay, put that in view. Okay, so that's first step. Now we need a piece of designer series paper and I used, so this is more of the perfectly plaid or wrapped in plaid, I guess, designer series paper. You need one piece of this that measures three and three quarters by three and three quarter inches. And all we're going to do is actually cut from corner to corner. And I forgot to bring, so we're just going to use scissors because this will work. I forgot, I brought my little dicer thing, okay? So there, we just cut those right in half there, okay? And then the idea is going to be that these pieces are gonna fit right on here. Oh, I'm really loving how that looks too, okay? So those pieces are gonna fit right on there. So let's go ahead and put those on rather than moving them out of the way and then losing them or something, right? Okay, so. Again, just a piece of three and three quarter by three and three quarter designer series paper and you just cut from corner to corner there. And then we're gonna lay this and you just, you're trying to get, a, it ends up being about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect either. Okay, got one there and we've got one there. Okay, so that looks good, right? Ooh, that's beautiful too, isn't it? That pretty plaid against that shaded spruce. Okay, now the next step, it's not really tricky, but what we're trying to do is cut a piece of paper that's gonna go inside here, and we need to have that little bit right there. I will tell you, at first I took a piece, this designer series paper, I'm gonna show you, measures, and I've got two of them that I need. 
This piece right here is what's gonna go on, but I don't want it, I think it's gonna be too hard. Somebody asked me when I was demonstrating, I think it's gonna be too hard if we leave the paper on there um, to fold it back. I think it'll be too bulky. So we just want a piece of designer series paper for that flap right there. So we have two pieces of designer series paper that measure three and three quarter by four and a half because we're gonna cut one piece to go there and we're gonna cut one piece to go there. What I first did was I again cut corner to corner and then thought I could just lay one part on here and one part on here and be all good. But you can't do that because this little part shows and it looks funny when this is open. You've got this funny little green area. So let me show you how we're gonna cut that paper and make it work, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are, and it's actually, this is like really not very technical. We're gonna lay this piece right on here. And again, we've got about an eighth of an inch showing around all of the edges. I'm gonna pull that in close so you can see. So what I wanna do is find, and this was the hardest part for me to show, but there's a little score mark right there. So we wanna bump in about an eighth of an inch and just make a little mark on here. So we're gonna make a mark right here at an eighth of an inch in. And then over on, we'll get close if you guys can see. Again, there's that square mark. So we're gonna mark right about there. And then we're literally gonna cut from that tick mark up to that tick mark. So let me lay this down and I'm just gonna mark it right about there. And since I have my big scissors, I think this is gonna work. So we're gonna cut I'm gonna try <laughs> the best I can. I would recommend having your trimmer here, but since I forgot that, and I, I've already tried to start this video like three times, so we're just going with it. But that works, right? Okay, so this is just an extra scrap piece of paper that you do not need. Save that for later for something else. We're gonna do the same type of thing right here. Okay, so we're gonna find our score mark. And again, we wanna cover this piece right here with our designer series paper, okay? So I am gonna lay this on here. I'm gonna put about an eighth of an inch around the edges. I'm gonna find my score mark here and I'm gonna bump in about an eighth of an inch there. I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna find my score mark here and about an eighth of an inch there. And then I'm gonna cut from one score mark up to the other one once I find it, because this paper is dark. Maybe I should have made a little bit um, darker tick mark. Okay, so then this one is gonna go right on there, okay? So let's go ahead and put our adhesive on. Isn't this beautiful though? Look at that, the gold, those fun gold accents. So one side of this wrapped and plaid designer series paper has the pretty gold accents, and then the other side is just um, a little bit more subtle without those gold accents, as you can see on that polka dot. And then we're gonna put that piece right there, okay? So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips here also. I'm gonna show you another one that I brought for my demonstration, because the polka dots, those did not matter which way um, the orientation was. But for example, I brought this one also to kind of show, you wanna make sure when you cut your designer series paper, you can see those are little reindeer, you wanna make sure it's tall, right? Cause you don't want your reindeer going this way or upside down, right? So just make sure that you cut it three and three quarters along that way and then make it a tall piece, four and a half going down this way. And same thing, you wanna line those up, right? And then make sure you adhere it properly too, okay? Um, Sharon actually used polka dots on hers, so that orientation didn't matter at all, but that's just something to think about. Same thing with this piece too, you wanna make sure when you put it on that you lay it with proper orientation so it's not sideways or upside down, okay? All right, so that is the basic idea of making that card. Now we can have our fun decorating it, right? Okay, so let me scoot this guy out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and finish our project. And like I said, you've got these couple of pieces of designer series paper that are left over. You can use for other fun things, okay? Uh, let's see, I wanna check my notes just to make sure, I think I told you guys everything. That felt like it went pretty smoothly, actually. <laughs> and I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to go that smoothly, I'm gonna be very honest with you. Okay, let me find my project so I can kind of follow along. So I just have, this is the piece that's gonna go on the inside right here. 
So why don't we do our stamping for the inside of our card. I'm gonna kind of bring this back out so you guys can see. So all we're gonna do is stamp those little bits right there. So we've got our Cherry Cobbler ink. Okay, and we've got Hoping That Your Busy Year Comes Together in Christmas Cheer. And I'm gonna tell you guys, okay, that worked pretty well. <laughs> it's a little bit wavy. So tip here, ladies, I really wanted just the Christmas cheer stamp for some of what I was doing, so I cut my stamp. Um, and I guess you maybe can't see too well, but it's a little bit wavy now when I put it back together. So <laughs> just be a little bit careful with that, those photopolymer stamps when you, <laughs> if you cut them apart. Um, I just didn't want the rest of the sentiment for all of what I was doing. <laughs> so be a little bit careful when you put it back together. And then these, oh my gosh. So Sharon had a little bit more ink on her shaded spruce um, ink pad probably than I've got on mine. Can you see? There's something about those little baby pine cones that I absolutely love. There's so much kind of depth and detail in those. I love that. So you can see hers are a little bit more smudgy. She just probably had a more inky ink pad. Okay, now we are going to, you know, I wonder, actually, typically I stamp first. What do I think? Do I want to do that? Nope. I think I'm going to die cut first. So let's scoot our ink out of the way. That's kind of backwards for me. Usually I stamp and then die cut, but that's a pretty tight fit. This is what I was looking at. You guys couldn't see that, could you? Um, I think that would fit. I'm a little worried about my tree. So we're going to die cut first, and then we're going to stamp on there to make sure I get it all, because I might move things out further than I should, and then I'll have a problem. Okay, so we need, these are our stitched shape framelits. I've already got, this is my largest stitched shape square. So we're going to use that one. I bet we can run both of these. So we're going to put that one right there. And then I've got a strip of, this is cherry cobbler cardstock. Okay. And this one, we are going to use our layering square framelits. And I actually already pulled, I'll show you. So this is the second largest actually. So there's the largest scallop edge. This is the second largest scallop edge is what we need for our cherry cobbler piece. Sorry if I bumped something there. Kind of heard it wiggling a bit. Okay, so we're going to do our die cutting on these guys. Oops, sorry. And these, they make so much noise because they're such big dies, I think. So, okay. That's all we need there. So let's see, we're going to scoot the die cutting machine out of the way. Let's pop these guys out. Actually, that one already popped out, so we're good with that one. And then we've got this one. And I may have, hers is actually probably the largest now that I'm looking. I didn't, I thought I had the right one when I checked that out. So Sharon actually used the largest frame. I have enough, so we're going to do that. Because this is how it layers, so it just peeks out that you can barely see, like teeny tiny little bit. So let's actually do that. I was incorrect. So bear with me, I actually have enough of my cherry cobbler cardstock. So we're gonna grab the largest. I thought it was too big when I checked it out earlier. I thought it was too big, but that's the one I'm pretty sure we're gonna need. So let's grab that. Okay. So I'll use that other square, the scallop square for something else. We'll try this one now. Okay. Ooh, and those plates. <laughs> they have seen better days. I should have normally for my videos, I grab my, um, <laughs> my little bit newer plate, but I forgot it this time. So, okay, there we go. All right, so we've got our pieces. I'm going to scoot that one out of the way so I don't get myself mixed up. And then we can do our stamping. So you can see, this is what I was kind of struggling with, was trying to make sure I had enough room. So we're going to stamp our... Make sure it's going the right way. May the special season be wrapped in love and joy. So this is just, and you can see, I like to use my pointer finger to kind of help me place that. And that didn't get inked up quite as much as I wanted. So we're gonna flip it over. Okay, this is like a blooper video at this point, isn't it? And I'm gonna press firmly to make sure all the ink transfers. There we go, that looks better. Okay, now we are going to use, next step is gonna be, to use our cherry cobbler on this piece. So we're gonna stamp our tree. 
right about there. Oh, that is beautiful, just like that, isn't it? And then we are going to add a layer of shaded spruce. And I'm trying to, so if you had your Stamparatus, you might want to use that. We are going to say a little prayer that I line things up. I think that looks pretty darn good. I am happy with that. Okay, so now we are going to actually, we popped this up on dimensionals, which are right here. Okay, so we are going to do that. Yep. Okay, we're going to put a couple dimensionals on the back of this guy. We're going to add this piece to our cherry cobbler scallop edged square right so we're going to put that on there and now i want to make sure to point out to you guys so don't go ahead and put adhesive all over the back of this because you don't you don't want any adhesive on this part right here so what we're going to do is we're going to just add a couple of dimensionals kind of on an angle behind this piece. So let's make sure we get it going the right way. So I want one here and I'm going to do maybe one there and one there. So we don't want, we don't want to get too close even to that um, kind of halfway point. If we put a couple of these dimensionals like this, that should be enough. And let's grab our card. So here's our orientation, right? We're going to pop those Oh my gosh, this is beautiful, right about there, right? Okay, now we just have a couple more steps. We have to do a little bit of embellishing because we always have to use our embellishments on our card. And this will stay flat. Sharon's has traveled around with me <laughs> a bunch at this point down to our convention and back. So I have, these are some of the red rhinestone basic jewels. So we are just gonna add few of these. Sharon went really crazy and added bunches of these red rhinestones. We'll see. We're just going to kind of pop them on. I love, um, it's funny because these have sat on my desk and I haven't used them for a little while. So it was fun to see her idea using them. All right. We'll put one there and maybe one more. Maybe right about there, just kind of on the little tips of our tree, right? Then the last step, I have just this little leftover piece from all of my displays that I had made, all my cards for our display. So this is the shaded spruce and gold striped ribbon, beautiful ribbon, that deep, deep green is gorgeous. And it coordinates so well. You know, you could futz with these bows all day long, right? But it coordinates really, really well with that designer series paper, the wrapped and plaid designer series paper. I always like to use a mini glue dot. Easiest way, just peel that back, find your next mini glue dot. Kind of use my finger to peel that off, make sure it comes off. And then we're going to put our bow on right there. And I'm going to kind of just trim this down. Maybe I'll go a little bit further so the tails aren't too long, right? And there we go. Sharon actually added a couple more. I think I'm gonna skip that because I'm afraid I might not get them. <laughs> I might not get them lined up evenly in the video. But isn't that beautiful? Love this card. So we've got the May the Special Season be wrapped in love and joy with the beautiful flippy. Oops, that's right. I forgot the inside of my card. Let's do that too. We'll put some adhesive on the whisper white piece oh you know what I forgot to tell you because this is a little bit different measurement I went to cut this piece so since I've already stamped on here I'm going to keep it this way but this whisper white piece measures three and three quarters by five and one quarter okay so that's the size that we're going to put right inside here and then you can see we've got our little eighth of an inch kind of peeking around all those edges so flippy fun fold holiday perfectly plaid wrapped in plaid card isn't that so cute so thank you guys so much for watching for hanging out i hope you enjoyed this card i hope you were inspired today 
If you are interested in purchasing any of the products that we use to make these fun flippy fold cards, make sure you go to my blog at gatheringinspiration.com. Grab the host code. It's over on that right-hand side toolbar on my blog at gatheringinspiration.com. So every week I do a Facebook Live video on the Gathering Inspiration Stamp Studio Facebook group. I would love to have you guys join us there. When you put your order in and use the host code, you always get the cards that I demonstrated. I do two cards every single week on Facebook Live. You get those two cards in the mail for free with at least a $30 order. And your name goes into the weekly Facebook Live giveaway, the drawing that I do. You can win even more product. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions. I would love to help you get set up with some of the products used to make this fun flippy fold card. And let me know if you have any questions. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye everybody.